I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up in reverence to reading of the Word, which is located in the book of Mark. Gospel according to what Mark wrote. Chapter 5, Mark 5, from verse 1. Who didn't bring a Bible? It's here on the projection. There it is. Let us read the word. Mark 1. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 says the following. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs and no one could bind him. So verse 21. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea and Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may uh, be held, and she will leave. Uh, the brother may sit down. My brethren, we will tonight give continuity to what was was spoken this morning to the children and our guests. Jesus, he went, came to the world to save everyone. Jesus overcame everything. Everything to give everyone an opportunity. To give everyone an eternity in the presence of a God that can do all things. And was because of this and for this reason that Jesus came to the world. Jesus didn't come to the world simply to give Israel a certain freedom, political freedom, or to give Israel a certain tranquility, or to give Israel a means to impose itself as a nation as they were expecting Israel to be. Jesus has never been a person that would become exclusive pro property of a nation. Jesus came to the world so that everyone from the four corners of the earth they would all be able to have access to salvation in Jesus. And we're going to show this in this word. We're going to see that Jesus is the one that is not limited to four walls. He is not limited to what man wants. He is not limited to what man imposes. But Jesus came to fulfill a mission, and this mission is to save everyone. And we see here two passages, two events that took place in the days of Jesus. The first one was, he was coming to the province of the Gadarenes. And do the brethren remember the passage in which, is, passage in which Jesus was in a boat with the disciples and a great storm came and Jesus was sleeping and a great storm came and when they could no longer con control their nerves, the disciples 
shivering and afraid, and they wake up Jesus. And Jesus, when he woke up, he says to the sea and the the wind, to silence, and to calm the seas. Do you remember? And during this crossing, Jesus was crossing what was called the Sea of Galilee. You can show. Do the projection here. Look at look at this. Jesus was there. I don't know if I have a, a laser here. Jesus what had Ele é aproximadamente 8 milhas. 8 milhas para cruzar de uma ponta a outra. Mais ou menos 13 km. E Jesus estava cruzando Por certo, a Bíblia não fala de onde ele estava saindo, mas ele estava indo nessa direção. Por que, que eu falo isso? Porque Jesus, quando ele desce do barco, depois da tempestade, Jesus ele, ele para aqui, mais ou menos aqui. Por que isso? Porque quando ele desce do barco, ele encontra com um homem que era morador da cidade de Gadara. E esse homem, ele tinha uma situação muito terrível na sua vida. Ele era um homem que tinha família, ele tinha casa. He had a house, but he lived at that moment in which he met Jesus, and surely, for a very long time, he was living a diabolical oppression. He was that lived uh, on the streets. He was. Uh, he lived in a hiding, running away from everyone. And when this oppression took a hold of his life, nobody would be able to hold him down, and would make a big mess. People would call the police. The police would imprison him, and he would break everything. He would get free. And the Bible says that, as we read here, that. Where was always dwelling in amongst the tombs in the cemetery? This man was a man that was had been neglected by the family, abandoned by everyone, and the people that for sure walked by his side, by his side, they would run away from him. Imagine you driving around here, then you found a, you find a person, a, a beggar. Uh, um, street dweller that is what do you do the first thing that you do or wind up your uh, your window and you lock the doors right of course no one to be close to people like this this man here he was very dangerous the family uh, let go of him how can you control a man like this? They would always break everything, always create trouble with the family. For sure, they have already lost their hope. It was a man that had a house, had a home. Oh, well, he had a house, but didn't have a home. He had a family, but they were not with him. And that's how this man used to live. A man who was not a Jew, I would like to mention this. He was not a Jew. He was gathering. When Jesus crosses the Sea of Galilee, which was in fact a lake, you see the Jordan River, the uh, Sea of Ga Galilee, was an extension of Jordan River. It was so large that people thought it was a sea. So people, like, uh, people from the state of Minas, you can not see a large lake, they think it's a, an ocean. <laughs> People from Minas in Brazil. They thought that it was a great sea. And when Jesus crosses there, Jesus goes out of the borders of Israel. He leaves the region of Israel to meet with a man that no one else wanted to meet with. Look how the life of Jesus was. 
Jesus, the Bible says that he spent the whole night, night in the storm. The disciples were there. He was sleeping. The disciples were all afraid, and Jesus was sleeping, resting. And as soon as he wakes up, he with, uh, just a, a phrase he says, "See, calms down, wind stops." Now everything was calm, and this is how Jesus that faces everything and everyone, so that man could have salvation, so that man could be able to meet with the Savior of the land. Jesus goes beyond the limits of Israel in order to meet with a man who was not a Jew. And there are many people like this, living like this man is living. People there are living a miserable life. People there are living a life of isolation. People there are being rejected by the family members. People that are rejected by the community, by the population. People that are being neglected, abandoned. They have no hope of life. People that are suffering. And the only thing that they expect, the only thing that brings a little comfort and consolation to them is when they find death. And this man, he always who could always be found in a cemetery. The only thing that for sure brought a little comfort to him, a little relief, it was when he was in the cemetery. Because there nobody would bother him. Nobody could uh, uh, run, run there. And it was a place where he felt comfortable. And there are people like this that are counting their days towards death. They are taking away their lives, looking for a relief, looking for a, some sort of comfort. Think that if they remove their, if they take their lives away, they will have some sort of comfort. But much on the contrary, that's when the great agony is going to start. But there are people like this. People that are waiting for an opportunity to meet with someone. People that are waiting for an opportunity to hear a word of peace. People that are waiting for an opportunity to hear a message of salvation. Something that may transform their lives. Something that may give them a hope, a reason for them to sleep and wake up, hoping for a better day. And those people, they will only find this in Jesus. And that's why Jesus, in that day, it went beyond the borders of Israel. The Israelites surely were surprised because Jesus, for them, he was exclusive to them. They were expecting the Messiah that was going to fight for Israel. They were hoping for a true Moses. But they didn't see in Jesus that he was the Savior of humanity. They didn't see Jesus. They didn't understand the reason why Jesus came to the world. But Jesus is the one who goes beyond everything and overcomes the storms. And the life of Jesus was like this. The whole life of Jesus here on earth was a difficult life. Overcoming the oppositions, overcoming religiousness on man, overcoming the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the ones who were the leaders, religious leaders of the time, to show man to show first to Israel and then to the humanity that he came to bring a message regarding a new kingdom not for this life but that would lead to eternal life Jesus overcomes this first storm and gives an opportunity to that man to meet with a savior this man was so amazed he was so satisfied that his life was completely transformed. And the short time was seen with Jesus once again, glorifying God, testifying of the deed that God has performed in his life. And when Jesus now, it's time for him to come back. 
he tells Jesus, Jesus, I want to go with you. He asks Jesus. In verse 18 and 19, he says he wanted to go with Jesus. He pleaded to be to go with Jesus. He wanted to be a disciple of Jesus. He just said, no. You need to go back to your home. You now have a home to go. You now have a family to take care of. You now have a family to testify. You need to reach them so that they also may overcome everything and everything have everything in God. Now you will proclaim how great things God has done in your life and how God had mercy on your life. And that man left that place completely transformed. A man that a uh, short while earlier had nothing. But when he met Jesus, he met him in a place where he didn't expect. In a moment he where, in which he didn't expect, he had a moment with a meet, with meeting with Jesus that transformed him completely. And now the text that we read on verse 21 forward, it says that Jesus was returning, surely, to Samaria. Why do I say that? Samaria. Capernaum. Capernaum. I say that because Jesus, Jairus, he was an uh, inhabitant of Capernaum. There was a uh, a temple in Capernaum in the times of Jesus. And when Jesus returns, he comes down the boat. Oh, he was always followed by a, a crowd. Guess who were, was waiting for Jesus? Jairus. And it was Jairus. Was he? That we just read? Jairus was, uh, he was a leader in his people. was a leader of a uh, religious religion of the time. He was a ru ruler and his role was to preach about the scriptures. He took care of the service of the Lord. He uh, took care so that the people would uh, know the laws of the Lord, the laws that the Lord had given to Moses. Jairus was a man that was completely involved with what we can say the spiritual side of Israel. He was he was kind of a pastor. I can't even say. But this man, he didn't see Jesus until then. He didn't see Jesus as being the Messiah. He saw Jesus as an enemy because Jesus was doing everything uh, against what he preached. Why do I say that? Because Jesus healed on a Saturday. Didn't Jesus heal on a Saturday? Jesus, he, once he resurrected a youth that was going there with a the mother, a widow mother, going to the cemetery. Jesus met with this entourage. The peop Jesus come with the disciples and the mother go with the uh, with take, taking the son and uh, cough, coffin and Jesus touched the coffin and this this child was was healed. No Jew could touch a, a coffin. It would, it, would, it, would, it would be deemed impure. No one could touch uh, a dead body. Only the priest could do this. But Jesus went there and touched on that dead body. And also a leopard woman touched Jesus and she was healed. No Jew man could be in contact with any person with leprosy, an uh, impure person. So that woman, she was there. And there's also another case of a woman that had a flow of blood. She was considered an impure woman. She could not be near the society. She could not be in contact with any Jew. 
but she passed by Jesus. She touched on the garments of Jesus, and at that point she was healed. Jesus was seen as a man, as an evildoer. Jesus was judged and condemned by the religious as a criminal. And that's how the Jews saw Jesus, as a criminal, a man that broke the laws, a true criminal. He was crucified. Crucifixion was the worst sentence possible that could get, have been given to someone at the time. Jesus was seen as an evildoer, but imagine this man who was a Jew. He, he was uh, a ruler of the synagogue. He kept the law. He kept the religious, religious rules. And now he overcame all of this in order to meet Jesus. But he overcame all of this. Firstly, he overcame what he was his own selfish ego. It was probably hard for him to do this. A man that was seen in syn synagogues preaching, but now he goes to meet with Jesus. You know why? Because he was always in the temple. He was a man of God. A man that was geared towards prayer. A man that uh, was geared towards the teaching of the scriptures. But he also had his own struggles. The fact that he was inside of a temple in a synagogue didn't give him uh, exemption from being a simple man. He had a daughter who was sick, was about to die for a very long time. And the time they took from uh, Jesus, from the point in which he met with Jesus, the, the request he made to Jesus to go to his house and pray for his daughter, and from the moment in which Jesus arrived to his house, his daughter had already passed away. That's how serious the infirmity that was in that uh, girl. And the man didn't see any other person. He didn't see any other possibility for him to have that problem resolved. No one that was in the temple of, of the synagogue knew that he had this problem, but he had it. But, and what I want to say tonight is exactly this. Jesus came to the world to save the sinner, to save the Christian, the unbeliever, the religious, and the person that is not religious. Jesus came to the world. He overcame the limits of this life. He broke every barrier in order to give everyone salvation. And Jesus also came to save those who are religious Jesus came to save those who are inside of the church that have a Bible in their hands, that are singing songs or praises, that are taking care of the spiritual side of their lives, but never had an experience with a true Savior. They are simply people that have knowledge about the Scriptures. People uh, that take care of the Bible and, and like to teach. Jairo is like this. He would say, oh, you cannot walk on a Saturday. You cannot work uh, on, on Saturday. Only on the other days. You cannot eat this. You cannot eat that. That was the life of Jairo. And he would point out the things that people could do and could not do. And there are people like this who are in the church. When I say church, I don't say church A, B, or C. We're speaking about our own churches. We're not concerned about church A, B, or C. We're concerned with what happens in our midst. And there are many people like this. They are living a life inside of the denomination Maranatha, a religious life. People that don't have any contact spiritual contact. They don't have any intimacy with God. They don't have close, closeness with God. Much on the contrary, they see of uh, what is called spiritual something wrong. Oh, God, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. 
But when Jesus came to this world, he came to remove religiousness from man. That's why Jesus came to the world, to give all of us an opportunity to meet with the true Messiah. Jairus, you only had the scriptures. You know the scriptures. But you know the difference about scriptures and, and the living word? Scriptures, it was what was given to Moses. That's what we can say. It's a Bible. The word of life. It's the letter. This is what you have, I have. You can buy anywhere. It's a simple Bible. It says, sacred Bible. Some say Bible, the word of life. Many say that. And those are the scriptures. But Jesus came to give to us to the revelation that is contained in the word. Jesus came to give to us a living word. A word that speaks. Jesus is the the word as beca became flesh. It is the word that became flesh and inhabited, inhabited amongst us. Jesus is it's not the scripture. He is the word of God. And when you meet with Jesus, you know the revelation of God that is contained in the word. When you open yourself up to Jesus, when you go to meet with Jesus, when you, with your struggles, go through your struggles like we all have, but when you overcome this barrier and you kneel down before Jesus and we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, the Father answers with might. And that's what the Lord wants to do tonight. He wants to take away from inside of us the so-called Christianity. Jesus tonight wants to remove from us religiousness. And he wants to give us a new experience, a work of the Holy Spirit that is being uh, done in the heart of this Christian. And that's what God wants to do. May God tonight use each one of us. May God give you a great experience so that you may overcome your barriers, so that you may overcome your limitations. And tonight you may be able to say, Lord, come to my house. And lay your hands upon my life. And lay your hands upon my family because I need to leave. May tonight, may the Holy Spirit cause you to open up your heart and ask the Lord for a blessing, not only for you, but for all of those there are uh, that your life is comprised of, so that you uh, may become part of His church and that we may all go around the world preaching the gospel, and the barriers may be overcome, not, not only the Christians, but the, also the non-Christians, so that we may all have an, a true experience with the Lord Jesus in that we may all let go of Christianity and live an eternal gospel. Gospel that was given, was written in eternity and is in the person of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us listen to a song.
Glory to God. Let us stand up, my brethren. When Jesus comes to the house of Lazarus, his daughter, who was 12 years old, was dead. But Jesus, at that moment, he performs a great miracle. He turns to her and said, Talita, rise. Girl, I tell you, get up and walk. Jesus has power to do all things. He has power to get up, rise up the ones who are dead, to heal the sick, to restore homes, to give lives, to give, give hope of life, to resolve any problem. It doesn't matter the situation which you might be, but if you go towards Jesus, he surely has a best blessing for your life. You just need to overcome everything that is hindering you, everything that is preventing you from going to Jesus. If you do this, you will be, leave this place transformed. Let us have a word of glorification of the Lord. I want to praise you for the days of the Lord in our midst for the spiritual celebration that you prepared this morning for our lives, for our children in your presence. Because we know, Lord, that you are the one who have taken care of us in a special way. You have taken care of your children in a special way, Lord. We praise you for your holy presence, for this wonderful message. Because we know, Lord, that you are the one who is always have open arms to embrace the lives that surrender to your feet, Lord. It doesn't matter how we are, Lord, but you love us in an unconditional way. You're the one who loves us in a wonderful way. We can, Lord, every day feel your great love, your care, which is amazing toward our lives, Lord. That's why we praise you, Lord, for our lives standing in your presence. For each heart, Lord, you moved so that then we could be in your house tonight we know that we are not going to leave this place in the same way we entered but we leave this place with the blessing of the lord in our hearts that's why we praise the lord for everything in the name of jesus yeah.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Uh, Brandon, the Lord has shown that as we were praying for the service tonight, the Lord was showing particularly a woman that has walked in the last few days with no direction in her life. She has been seeking um, a way to find herself. But tonight, the Lord is giving you a reason because you have been seeking what is material. God wants to give you a solution to your pain, to your suffering. Because independent of where you are, doesn't matter where you go, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you will continue to be confused. You continue to feel pain. You know why? Because Christian or not Christian, the problem is only one. The problem is in the soul. The problem is in the soul. But tonight, God wants you to meet truly. You can find the true solution to your life, which is opening up your heart to Jesus and allow Jesus to enter in your home. I didn't say, I don't know if I said, Jesus entered into the house and the girl was healed. And that's, that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to transform death into life. And that's what Jesus came to the world, to remove the solitude of man's soul and uncertainty and put the certainty of an eternity in the presence of God. Amen. Let's close our eyes and pray, closing the service. And if you also understand that this spiritual gift is speaking with you, we want tonight, we want to pray for you so that you may find the right direction in your life and so that you may find a tower where you may be able to enter and have security. And this tower is the Lord Jesus. This path is Jesus because it's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but through Him.
All the hell is in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Lord God, at this moment we want to praise your holy name. Because Jesus came to dwell in our hearts. He being the Son of God, He came to fulfill the law. He came to give us a new understanding regarding the gospel. What has been our way of coming close to you. We praise the Lord because you have helped us to this day. You have been our everything. In Jesus, we are more than victorious. And we praise you, Lord, for this spiritual gift that you have given us, which is salvation in Jesus. And for this, in adoration to your name, we, we give praise to you, Lord. We ask that we may receive our praise and our adoration. Take us home in peace. Then give us a week of victories in your presence. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We are coming to the end of our service. And if you need a blessing, a prayer, we are here at your disposal. The deacons and ushers, the women, may you tonight leave this place with the assurance that your name is written in the book of life. No one, no one will take your name away from that book. When we want to say peace of the Lord to everyone.